Consider it a way to kickstart a day. Can I have a triple latte hot? Have we breathe? Oregon chai, please. I smoke a latte. Ice coffee. On ice, flavored, steaming, or just straight up. Arizonans are crazy for their cup of joe. And during our stop in Bisbee, we found the king of the coffee houses. Hi, I'm Rob. Welcome to the Bisbee Coffee Company. Walk into this place, or just take a seat outside, and you can practically smell freshness seeping from every nook and cranny. The coffee that you're enjoying is roasted within 24 hours. How's that for fresh? And at the Bisbee Coffee Company, their special roaster means those beans are at their best. We have a 30 pound Diedrich coffee roaster. We can roast usually about 15 to 1700 pounds of coffee a day. One of the best things about getting coffee that's roasted on the premises is you're getting coffee that was roasted right here and it's fresh. Coffee tends to deteriorate its flavor after about two weeks. So knowing that there's a roaster right on top of the coffee shop is a great selling point for the coffee shop. So we headed upstairs to see this roaster in action. And when Justin cranked up the machine, we were not disappointed. All right, we'll be roasting some Colombian coffee. This is gonna be a dark roast. In less than 20 minutes, those beans will go from green to dark and delicious. This type of roaster, it's just a big solid metal drum inside that's rotating with these two infrared burners on either side. We're getting closer to 300 degrees, but it won't start to smell or taste anything like coffee until about 400 degrees or so. Every once in a while, I'll take out a sample and smell it. During the roast, Justin keeps a close eye and nose on the beans. And once those oils are out on the beans in the roaster, that's where you, get, you start to get a really smoky flavor. Some beans can handle it, and some just taste burnt. But if I can slow it down enough, I can really get a nice, smooth cup of coffee. To watch the roasting process, it's almost like watching a scientist at work. And the Bisbee Coffee Company takes great care in each and every roast. Each bean, when it comes in, I like to try to do some test roasts and determine which type of roast will best suit that bean. Some beans grown at a lower altitude can't handle a dark roast, they get bitter. Uh, some beans that are grown at a very high altitude, if they're roasted too light, they can be too acidic. I keep records of every roast, so that way when I taste it, when I cup it, I can try to determine what was good about that roast, what flavors it did justice to. And then, the moment of truth. And it's about time for me to drop them out of the roaster. When it comes to the roasting process, you don't have to be a TV crew to get an up-close look at the show. It's actually open to everyone. We have sets set up so that our customers down here in the shop can watch the roasting process upstairs. A lot of times folks will watch the roasting process on the video and they'll know we're roasting and that's their cue to come upstairs and watch a roast being produced. The beans come from around the world, giving customers the choice between a dozen different coffees. And at the Bisbee Coffee Company, you even get a little something extra. There's a lot of personality in Bisbee. There's a lot of personality that goes into the roasting process, the selling process. Uh, so people know that they're getting a little bit of Bisbee when they come down and get, a car, get our coffee. A little bit of Bisbee in every cup. We'll drink to that. Step inside the Stock Exchange Bar in Bisbee and be prepared to step back in time. The grand building features a high and perfectly crafted ceiling. A large bar harkens back to days gone by. And an original giant stock exchange board. This is how they used to keep track of everything from metals to cotton in New York and Chicago. The massive board covers one of the walls and provides a unique and charming feel. The bar often features live music and there is plenty of space to sit and listen while enjoying a cold pint or your favorite drink. The eclectic yet historical watering hole also has a shuffleboard table and pool tables. Standing tall, the sturdy structure with some decorative features has become a fixture in downtown Bisbee, drawing people here from all over the globe. 
Arizona Highways Television is brought to you by Arizona Public Service and the Arizona Office of Tourism. If you're looking for kind of a quaint Western experience not far from Phoenix, you got to check out the town of Cape Creek. It's got a little something for everyone, some rustic charm, some rowdy bars and grills, cool eclectic shops, and even some peaceful getaways where you can just sit back and enjoy the beauty of the Sonoran Desert. The town of Cape Creek has a reputation for all things touristy and kitschy, but rarely is it described as epic until you get to the Rare Earth Gallery on the corner of Schoolhouse and Cave Creek. Basically, I'm a purveyor of art of the earth, and that's what the gallery consists of, beautiful things from the earth. Some of these are epic in their size and their, in their, in their total dimension, um, and things you wouldn't see anywhere else on the planet. Wayne Helfen owns the Rare Earth Gallery. I've handpicked everything that's in the gallery. Uh, I travel the globe. Um, I'm in Brazil, Morocco, Madagascar. Uh, last year I was in China and Vietnam for a month. Uh, it, it, it's a full-time job trying to find these eclectic items that will ooh and wow people. There's things that go back uh, 500, 600 million years. Uh, in, in, in their creation and in, in their evolution. So from fossils from the uh, bottom of the Sahara Sea in Morocco to uh, the Amazon rivers in Brazil, uh, it spans the globe. There is a five-ton quartz crystal at the front of the gallery, one of the largest in the world, according to Wayne. There are other huge high-end crystals and geodes, and there is color upon color everywhere. For most people that come in here, it's, wow, oh my God, is that real? How did you glue those crystals into the piece? Uh, is, is this a museum? Another thing they say is, how much do you charge to come in? Well, my parents have a house nearby, and we've been here before, and my uncle and aunt are visiting from California, and I told them they had to come here because it's by far the most interesting store in all of Cape Creek. It's a beautiful store. We thought we'd be in and out in five minutes and just go next door. And we've been here now approximately an hour, and we're not even halfway through yet. And we're looking, and we've stuff we've never seen in Canada or virtually anywhere. Some of the pieces have been made into functional tables, and the amount of eclectic items seems endless. Most of it's wow, unbelievable, totally cool, epic. I mean, those are the words that come to mind for most of these people. This is a really hot steam iron, and we're actually going to shrink this down. Long before those madmen of prime time inspired the resurgence of stylish hat-wearing men, Eric Watson was okay. making them. Can I get something I could wear out in the desert, something could get a little dirty? Oh yeah, that'd be a felt. Okay. That'd be a felt hat. Pure Beaver is the lightest weight. The hats have come back strongly because Hollywood has seemed to be focusing on all kinds of movies and TV series where the main character wears a hat. Eric Watson fell in love with hats when he first saw Indiana Jones on the big screen. The, the way I dress, you know, people say, oh, you, you must be an old soul. And I say, well, yeah. Um, I mean, even at a young age, like I would dress nice and uh, I just feel more comfortable. When he couldn't find a hat like his hero, Indiana, an old hatter taught him to make his own hats. The hatter took a liking to the young, old soul and taught him the tricks of the trade. I would rather work with equipment that's 100 years old, you know, or, or 80 years old, versus something new today. It just, I feel more comfortable around it. So I suppose maybe that's part of the old soul too. In 2012, Eric opened up Watson's Hat Shop in Cave Creek. This is for men and women, and we even have uh, the ability to build kids' hats. We also offer uh, American-made factory hats on the other side of the shop. So we focus on, uh, you know, hats for a little bit of everybody. As far as the shop, uh, we have all sorts of hat bands that we offer. Um, everything from custom hand-braided horsehair hat bands to leather hat bands 
to uh, silver hat bands. I mean, we have silver hat bands that are custom made. Can I feel right? How's that feel? That feels good. That feels good. I came in to get a hat. I have a friend who got a hat here and loves it. And I've never been able to wear hats because I have a very large head and it's sort of an odd shape. So I'm anxious and hoping I can get a hat finally that really fits my head well. While hats are coming back for both men and women, it still takes a certain courage for some people to put one on. But walk around Eric's store and you're probably going to be taking one home. It makes sense, especially in Arizona. A lot of people uh, back in the day, you know, from those eras wore hats all the time. So maybe that's a reason that I enjoy hats and like it too. Arizona Highways Television is brought to you by Arizona Public Service and the Arizona Office of Tourism. We're taking a cue from that Fifth Dimension song, Up, Up and Away in My Beautiful Balloon. See, when the seasons change and the weather gets a little cooler, it's perfect for this kind of high-flying adventure. The winds are a little calmer and the balloon gets more lift. And hey, not a better way to see Arizona's gorgeous landscape. So let's go, all aboard. Like the roar of some fire-breathing dragon, the burners superheat the chilly air. The rising bubble of hot air fills the balloon fabric. In a short time, the balloon and basket are upright, eager to leap into the sky. When you pull one of these flaps open, it just simply allows air to escape in one direction and that gets the balloon to slowly rotate. It doesn't change our direction or speed, unfortunately. It just rotates us in place. I can already see, you know, right after we take off why we chose this launch site. I mean, it just doesn't get any prettier than this. This is spectacular. No noisy propellers, no joystick, no engine. Without all that stuff comes incredible peace and quiet. But it also means balloon pilots face some real challenges in steering these beauties. Hot air ballooning is pretty much the simplest form of aviation there is. Uh, basically, all we're doing is capturing a bubble of hot air, and we're controlling the temperature of that bubble to go up or down. We do have instrumentation to tell us what we're doing, moving up or down or, or horizontally. But basically, you're just navigating with the winds. The trick is to find the winds that are going where you want the balloon to go. That means going up or down in invisible currents of air to find north or south, east or west. If you're a hot air balloon pilot, you do have to be certified with the FA. You do have to go through flight training, ground school, flight tests, you name it. Getting an eye full of awe, it's easy to forget. Temperatures drop as you go higher. So even in the warmer months, passengers are urged to bring along a hat and an extra layer of clothes. We do like cooler temperatures. We're working on a difference of air temperature with the balloon. The warmer it is outside the balloon, it's got to get that much warmer inside the balloon. So the summertime, we, we are starting to have to carry lighter loads and keep from overheating the balloons. Our fuel efficiency goes up uh, a lot in the wintertime, so we like that a lot. We now have two to three hour flight capacity in the wintertime, where in the summer it might only be about two hours. I just wanted to do it. She's jumped out of airplanes before, so. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't figure she'd have a problem with it. I had heard a lot about how quiet it is up there and everything, and I didn't, I, I didn't really believe it. So I was expecting it to be pretty noisy and things like that. It was exactly what you heard. It's, very quiet, very serene, peaceful. The faster the wind is for landing, the more exciting they become. You will bounce and drag a little bit as the winds start to pick up. We're, we're pretty spoiled here in Arizona. We have, we have pretty calm winds. Anything beyond 10 to 12 miles an hour, we just generally don't fly. Balloons have no wheels, no landing gear, so thrills go higher as you drop lower to land. There'll be one kind of sharp, abrupt bump and then just a little bit of a drag. Hey, mate. Hot Air Expeditions put a fancy finish on their daybreak flights, a champagne breakfast.
Arizona Highways Television is brought to you by Arizona Public Service and the Arizona Office of Tourism. About 30 miles north of Tucson, sculptor Jerry Parra's Ranch Store Center sits along the main drag in the town of Oracle. While cars zoom past, Jerry is in his ramshackle workshop turning rusty old mining, motorcycle, and car parts into colorful, metallic, original works of art. This crow man is called Rocket Man. He's made out of Harley Davidson parts and the old, uh, old car parts. These are off a 51 Cadillac. This is a lockbox to a Harley Davidson toolbox. These are from a 55 Chevy. And this is from a 64 Impala. Spare parts, all found in Jerry's virtual motor city, nestled here in the Santa Catalina Mountains. Jerry is part welder, part blacksmith. My kind of art's one of a kind, and uh, they don't see it anywhere else. And pure artist. I call this uh, mixed cultures, starting with a mud head. It's got the Apache influence. I've got the leg wrappings, the moccasins. This copper's from magma, it long shut down from now on. These uh, conchos are uh, Spanish, Mexican style. It's around 10 foot tall, weighs about uh, 350 pounds. Amazing details that are Jerry's signature. And nothing goes unused, as you can see by this garden flower, sculpted from railroad spikes, rebar, shovels, and of course, old car parts. And these flowers last longer than the real kind. <laughs> A new discovery of precious metals in this old southern Arizona mining town. Thanks everyone so much for joining us. I'm Robin Sewell and we'll see you on the next Arizona Highways.